All right, uh, welcome everyone to the List the Leather Back public comment workshop. Uh, this is an online workshop on how to submit public comments to help list leatherback sea turtles under the California Endangered Species Act. My name is Rebecca Staub and I am the communications manager here at Turtle Island Restoration Network. Uh, before we jump in, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. You know, we know the current state of the world is, uh, it's been daunting and it continues to be pretty daunting. And we just wanted to express how grateful we are to be able to connect with everyone online today and um, stay safe while doing it. So thank you so much for being with us today. Today's workshop will start with a quick overview of Turtle Island Restoration Network and the background on leatherback sea turtles so we can learn more about why they are an endangered species and the current threats to their survival. Then we'll talk about some of the protections they have and how we can strengthen them with the help of everyone who joined our call today. We also have time for questions at the end, so if you have any inquiries during the workshop, you are more than welcome to use the chat feature, which is at the bottom of your screen. If you just move your mouse to the bottom of the screen, click the chat, chat button in the middle, and then type in your question at the end of the presentation. We'll be happy to go over as many of those as we can at the end. So Turtle Island Restoration Network is a global ocean conservation nonprofit currently based in Northern California. We started in 1989 as the Sea Turtle Restoration Project under Earth Island Institute. So this year we celebrated our 30th anniversary of protecting the oceans and watersheds. Uh, today we have offices in California and Texas and more than 200,000 members who support our work around the globe. Our mission is to mobilize people in local communities around the world to protect marine wildlife and the oceans and inland watersheds that sustain them. Um, a lot of our work started with sea turtles and today we need your help granting additional protections for leatherbacks. And to help us understand why this effort is so important and how you can help us make it a reality, um, I am joined by Annalisa Toole, who is our Policy and Advocacy Manager, and Steph Sharp, who is our Development Manager. So now I'm going to pass it over to Steph, who will give us the lowdown on Pacific Leatherback Sea Turtles and why they need our help. Thanks, Becca. Um, thanks again to everyone for joining us for the workshop. My name is Steph. I'm a left-handed Aquarius and I'm the development manager at TURN. Many folks on the webinar are Turtle Island supporters, so you're probably already a bit familiar with the Pacific leatherback sea turtle and its plight. For those who may need a refresher, leatherback sea turtles are one of the seven species of sea turtle, and they join six out of the seven sea turtle species that are listed as endangered. Leatherbacks exist in a taxonomic family all their own, setting them apart from the other six species. They get their name from their soft leather-like shell, unlike the other species that have a hard shell. Leatherbacks are also the only living endothermic reptile. That means they're warm-blooded just like us. They are the largest of all living turtles, growing upwards of six feet in length and weighing up to 2,000 pounds. Leatherbacks can travel as many as 10,000 miles or more each year between foraging grounds in search of jellyfish. In the Atlantic, they swim from Caribbean beaches up to the U.S. East Coast to Canada. In the Pacific, many travel from Southeast Asia, particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, to California and then up to Alaskan waters. Leatherbacks are the most widely distributed of all sea turtles and are among the most migratory animals on Earth. Sadly, this incredibly unique animal is in danger due entirely to anthropogenic or man-made threats. Populations of Pacific leatherbacks have declined more than 90% since 1970 and are in imminent danger of extinction. Four years ago, the National Marine Fisheries Service named the Pacific leatherback one of eight marine species most likely to go extinct. As few as 2,300 adult females remain, and scientists predict that the Eastern Pacific leatherback subpopulation will be extirpated or go extinct by 2040. Pacific leatherbacks are the world's most endangered sea turtle population. The primary threats that are driving leatherbacks to extinction include drowning in industrial longline fishing gear, drowning in industrial gillnet gear, uh, with similar target species as longlining, 
entanglement and drowning in the vertical lines of crab traps and other forms of marine debris and pollution, ship strikes, and habitat loss and reproductive disruption caused by climate change. There are some protections already in place to help leatherback survive, including being listed under the Federal Endangered Species Act since 1970. Under the Federal Act, California waters are designated as critical habitat. There is also a ban on longline gear off the California coast for three months of the year when leatherbacks are present. Despite these protections, the Trump administration has rolled back more than 100 environmental regulations, effectively dismantling the United States environmental policy framework in a few short years. Given the severity of mounting threats faced by leatherbacks and political hostility to their survival, clearly much more needs to be done. Annalise is here to talk about the California Endangered Species Act and how listing the Pacific leatherback will help further protect this keystone species. Thanks, Steph. So Turtle Island Restoration Network actually has a pretty long track record of saving leatherbacks from extinction. And our most recent successes include filing a lawsuit which, would, which halted the government from reopening longline fishing off the California coast. We were also part of the effort to designate the closed area in the Pacific Ocean. And in California, we've helped pass legislation to designate October 15th as Pacific Leatherback Conservation Day. We're currently working to pass federal legislation to end the last strip net fishery in the United States, which occurs off the coast of California and drowns leatherbacks and injures and kills thousands of other marine animals every year. So today, we're advocating for listing Pacific leatherbacks under the California Endangered Species Act because these would provide additional protections on Pacific leatherbacks, which include increasing state or federal cooperation and coordination. It would prohibit the catch of incidental fishing without a California issued incidental take permit. It would compel California to prepare its own recovery plan for these animals. It would improve monitoring of leatherback sea turtle abundance and populations. It would uh, create state management of the deadliest fisheries in California, including the longline and drift gill net fisheries, which catch and kill these beautiful creatures. And it would establish hard caps and 100% observer coverage in all fisheries that could kill endangered Pacific leatherbacks as bycatch. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process of listing Pacific leatherbacks under CESA or the California Endangered Species Act. So I'm gonna to refer to that as CESA. And the process of undergoing this listing is actually pretty straightforward. So first, an organization or individual petitions the California Fish and Game Commission, and I'm just gonna to refer to them as the commission from now on, to list a species. In this case, Turtle Island Restoration Network and the Center for Biological Diversity both petitioned the commission to list Pacific leatherbacks. So once they received the petition, the commission sends it to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And there's so many acronyms, I'm just gonna call this CDFW. So we have CDFW and the commission referred it to them for analysis to make a formal recommendation. So now the commission sends the petition to CDFW who assesses it, makes the recommendation, and here CDFW found that the petition contained sufficient relevant information to indicate that listing Pacific leatherbacks may be warranted, and they recommended that the commission accept to consider the petition. So on Wednesday, August 19th of this month, the commission will formally address CDFW's recommendation and will make a decision to either accept or reject that recommendation. This is where we need you. They have thus far indicated that they will likely accept CDFW's recommendation, but strong public support for listing leatherbacks under CESA will really go a long way. So once the commission makes their recommendation, hopefully in the affirmative, CDFW will have an additional year to conduct a status review for Pacific leatherbacks, and then will make their final decision for listing. During that year, the species is given full protections under CESA as if they were a formally listed species. So if the commission votes to accept our petition on August 19th, with your help, Pacific leatherbacks will officially have full CESA protections for at least one year, hopefully forever, until they're delisted. But in order for these protections to be permanent, the commission must decide to formally list the species under CESA 
following the submission of CDFW's report in August 2021. So in a year, we're going to call on you again to make these same public comments and make sure that we protect Pacific leatherbacks from extinction. So now I'm going to hand it over to Steph, who's going to talk a little bit more about why we need your help in this process. Thanks, Annalisa. As Annalisa said, uh, it's important to get as much support for listing Pacific leatherbacks under CISA and the administrative record as possible. This support will go a long way in passing both the current decision to list as a candidate species during the one-year process and in the Commission's final decision next year. Support, in the sense, means harnessing people power to give written or oral testimony in the form of a public comment that will lend weight to the voices speaking for the leatherbacks. That's why we need your help. Public participation is essential to the democratic process, uh, something we could use a little bit more of these days, and critical for developing more effective regulations. As citizens and community members, it is our collective duty to use our freedom of speech to the benefit of the people and planet. As we well know, state and federal agencies do not always prioritize those interests. Publicly submitted comments identify flaws in regulations and offer solutions to reach a better outcome. Essentially, we're holding CDFW accountable to the public as well as the technical experts. While the public does not get to vote in these instances, we are informing policy by showing up and thoughtfully speaking our minds. One well-supported comment is often more influential than a thousand form letters. Here are a few quick tips on writing an effective public comment that will be useful for written and oral testimony. Uh, first and foremost, do your homework. Thoroughly understand the regulation that you will be commenting on. In this case, we have all the background information that you need and we'll be sharing it with you just after the webinar. Introduce yourself. Uh, most importantly, tell your story. Uh, express any personal and emotional connections that you have. For instance, if you're a diver, a student of marine sciences, or if you're simply passionate about ocean conservation or wildlife issues. State your view clearly and succinctly. In this case, you're asking the commission to list the Pacific leatherback. Always support your claim with facts and remember to say thank you. For example, thank you for your time and consideration. Keep in mind, you will have between one to three minutes to speak during public comment. However, there is no minimum or maximum length for written comments. Because the agency will have to sort through and listen to many identically written comments and public testimony, we recommend that you always make yours personal and unique. Offering your opinion in public comment is an easy and effective means of enacting change. While the process may seem complex and bureaucratic, it's surprisingly simple. All you have to do is show up and sign in. Thankfully, we have an expert public commenter in our presence today, so Annalisa will explain how to answer this call to action. Thank you so much, Steph. So I really want to reiterate a couple points that Steph made. First of all, your voice in this process is so important. And second of all, what she said, that one well-supported comment is often more influential than a thousand form letters, it's so true. I've seen during these public comment meetings before, one well-spoken uh, emotional story can really change minds of the commissioners more than a thousand dry papers filled with data can. Not necessarily a good or a right thing, but it's so true. So if you have a personal connection to nature or conservation or sea turtles, I really uh, encourage you to express that in your comments. So I'm going to speak a little bit more to the nitty gritty of giving these comments and participating in this process. So there are a couple of ways that you can participate in the democratic process and provide comments in support of listing Pacific leatherbacks under CISA. First, you can provide oral testimony at the meeting. In other words, you're going to actually say why leatherbacks are so important to you and that you want the commission to list them under CISA. If that's a little too scary for you, you can also provide written comments. They're both extremely impactful, and yes, you can do both, but what I really want to inspire you to do today is to provide that oral testimony, because again, it's really going to make a difference. So the commission is going to be holding these meetings virtually because of the world we're in. We can't be there in person. That means they'll be sending out Zoom details 
of how to join in the meeting. And we will send that out to you. So I don't want you to stress about writing down notes or details right now because we are going to send you everything in an organized packet after this. Right now, just kind of let it sink in. So they're going to have a Zoom meeting. We'll send you that information. You can join via Zoom, or if you don't have that technology, technology capability, you can just call in via the phone. If you're going to provide a, a public statement, or if not, I really just encourage you to listen in because it's a really exciting uh, process to be a part of. So first of all, you will, once you listen in on that meeting, I want to warn you that given the nature of these types of meetings, there is no set timeline. In other words, we know that our agenda item is going to be up as number 13 out of 15 on a day which starts at 10 a.m. and will go until however late it goes for them to finish. So we can estimate that our agenda item will be up in mid-afternoon, and that's the best guess I can give you, unfortunately. However, if you do sign up, on the forms we provide saying that you're interested in providing public testimony, I'll email you or text you when our agenda item is coming is, uh, is about to come up. So we'll help you through this process. And I do want to reiterate that we are, help, we are here to help you through the entire process. Email us, call us, we're going to be sending you additional documents, but we want to empower you to be part of this democratic process for this issue and for future issues. So do not hesitate to come with us for any questions you have. I also want to give you a fair warning that you're going to hear me during that agenda item. I will be presenting the original petition that we submitted to the Fish and Game Commission, defending why we think uh, Pacific leatherback sea turtles should be listed under CESA. So you're definitely going to hear my voice and see a presentation. And then Steph and Becca and I will let you know when it's time for public testimony. So at that time, our fabulous public testimony givers here that will be trained and experts will either, if you're listening to the meeting via, uh, via Zoom, will do the raise your hand function. Again, we'll give you more details on this later. Or if you're calling in, it'll be a star nine function. You get details on that later. And then you'll provide your testimony. So depending on how many people choose to speak up and provide public comments, you'll either be given one to three minutes by the commission. So during that time, you're going to stick to those points that Steph gave you. You're going to state your name, that you're a member of TURN, maybe where you're from. You're going to describe your personal emotional connection to this issue. So I could say, you know, I am a... Uh, environmental professional I am um, or just you know my personal connection to wanting to prevent extinction for the future of my children I can say you know my uh, my emotional connection to sea turtles maybe I saw one one time and now I'm just committed to saving all forms of sea turtles that are facing extinction whatever it may be I really encourage you to get into your story this is uh, just a great opportunity to connect emotionally with members of the commission, maybe tell them what got you initially, initially excuse me, involved in wildlife issues at all. So next you're going to state a version of the following, and we're going to provide the script for you, but I really encourage you to change it around and make it your own. This is just a starting point in case you're not sure what to say. Something along the lines of, I strongly support listing critically endangered Pacific leatherback sea turtles under the California Endangered Species Act. Uh, these gentle giants have been listed under the Federal Endangered Species Act since 1970, but their populations have not recovered. So listing on them under the California Act will give the species a fighting chance for recovery. Thank you for your consideration. Something along those lines, it can be short and sweet to the point. So again, we will be following up with a packet of organized information with all of these details, but do not hesitate to reach out to us with any other questions you have. And I think we actually have some time to answer questions right now. 
Yes, thank you so much, Annalisa and Steph. That was great. And we do have time for some questions. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that we will be sending you guys all of this information with step-by-step -step guides after this. And all three of us are available to answer any questions that come up throughout the process. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a few questions right now. Again, the chat button to ask questions is at the bottom of the screen in the center. You can just type your questions into that box. And um, while we review some of those, we also want to encourage you guys to check us out online. Our website is seaturtles.org. It's pretty easy to remember. And then we're on all sorts of social media. So um, just encourage you guys to connect with us on there. <laughs> 